Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Please, you can start the, the oh, webinar. Okay. okay. All right. Good, good morning, um, noble colleagues. And uh, welcome to our webinar series five. The, the theme of this webinar, like we all know, is uh, fundamentals of property valuation for best practice. And uh, we, this is the fifth series. Uh, we, we've done series, uh, um, series one, two, three, and four. And uh, without wasting much of our time, let me quickly go to introduction. I have a chart where that contains all the series we have aired so far, but we are, I'm going to display that later the topics and the various facilitators. So this morning, quickly, we have the fifth series and uh, like as it has been advertised, the topic is understanding the provisions of applicable standards for financial reporting valuation. This is another area of our practice where the the we are required to be very careful and um, the uh, lecturer for today is going to do justice to that now let me bring introduce to you the uh, our facilitator for today estate is a senior member of the profession estate surveyor and valua uh adamu danladi kashi <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Yes, I, I got love. Maybe because I called, I called your middle name. <laughs> no, you are correct. You are correct. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Okay, I also have in here a part of the panelists, Estee Sobia and Valua Olalika Boderi, who is the director of studies of uh, Risa Academy, and uh, is also going to be part of the panelists. We will also be having the co-sponsor of this webinar, Estee Sovio and Valua, uh, Victor Adekunle Alunge. I don't think he's in yet. He also, when he comes in, he will also be part of the uh, webinar, uh, part of the panelists. Now, we are, I'm going to recognize more people later, but let's begin the work, okay? And this will start by uh, going through the profile of the our today's uh, facilitator. Add me, okay? Um, yes, sir. Okay, don't worry. I'm sharing the screen already. Okay, sir. Yes. Okay, the profile of Estate Sovia Valua Adamu Kashim Shetima, Fellow of Nigerian Institution of Estate Sovia and Valuas. S.S. Sovia and Valua Adamu Kashim, sorry, I think I mentioned Shetima, sorry, 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 <laughs> no, Adamu Kash, Kashim is a private practitioner and a consultant and a fellow of Nigerian Institution of S.S. Sovia and Valuas, member International Right of We Association, IRUA, fellow, Certified Institute of Auctioneers, registered and board member of the Estes of Yours and Value Association Board of Nigeria. And the Financial Reporting Council. Estes of Yours and Value Adamu Kashimu holds a Master's of Science degree in Real Estate from the University College of Estate Management, Reading. United Kingdom. It was an estate of your and Valor with Alagbe and Partners, Mina, Niger State, 1989 to 1990. A lecturer with the Federal Polytechnic, Nasarawa, 1990 to 1992. Estate officer in Karu Local Governments, Nasarawa State, 1992 to 1993. Director of Works, Land and Survey, 
Nasara State Local Government Service Commission, 1993 to 1997, hosted to Karu Tutu, Obi, Akwanga, Kefi, and Kukuna Local Governments. Associate partner with Ayodele Iboye and Associates, Huse Abuja, 1997 to 2001. Major projects handled include the valuation of WINC NNPC headquarters, Abuja, the acquisition of the site for the Ihobo power plants, Bini, Edo States, acquisition of the 22 kilometer Usong Creek Town, Udukma power plants, ga gas pipeline, and currently working on the 128 kilometer Kanu. Kwangalam dualization project, amongst others. A former chairman of Nigerian Institution of Estate Surveyors and Valuers, Abuja Branch, one time chairman, investigative panel, and vice chairman of Estate Surveyors and Valuers Registration Board of Nigeria. Noble colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, join me to bring on board Estate Surveyors and Valuer. Adamu Kashim Shetima, our today's uh, facilitator. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, actually, my name my name is Adamu Aladi Kasim. <laughs> Shetima happened to be a friend, and uh, he's late. Um, am I to start? Yes. Thank you very much. The anchor of this uh, program. Uh, first, I want to humbly thank uh, the management of Reals Academy for organizing this uh, very important webinar. And the choice of the topic, understanding the provisions of applicable standards for financial reporting valuation. It's really timely because it's an aspect of the practice that the SSO surveyors and valuers practicing in Nigeria seem to have kept uh, below the, uh, the radar. So I, I, I'm, really, I'm really happy that uh, the Rails Academy found this topic uh, so important to be discussed now. Um, I will be quick to, to say that this is one area of uh, uh, paper presentation that I have never thought I will be invited to do, but it's a challenge because uh, it's a very wide area. looking at the provisions of applicable standards for financial reporting valuation. When we begin to talk about standards alone, standards can take us a whole day. But then I tried as much as possible to compress everything to something we should be able to finish between within uh, 45 minutes or so. So uh, I want to say thank you to Reals Academy for this opportunity given to me. Um, the scope of this paper can you share the screen? The scope of this paper, what I have here is uh, financial reporting. I will have to look at financial reporting as a subject because until we know what financial reporting is, before we begin to talk about the standards to attain uh, uh, an efficient uh, financial report. We'll look at the basic components of financial reports. We'll also look at the connection between accounting and valuation standards. How are they connected? We'll have to answer that. Then, we we'll now look at 
valuation for financial reports in itself. Then applicable standards, that is the IAS, I, uh, that is the international accounting standards, international valuation standards, international financial reporting standards, and the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. These are the basic uh, standards that we're going to look at today. Then we conclude. Um, uh, financial reports, what is it after all? But then we have to look at financial report that there are three categories of organizations that operate in our own environment today. We have the public, these are the ministries, the MDAs. We have private entities, just like the sole proprietorships, the limited liability companies, the quoted companies and the unquoted companies. These are private entities and we have not for, uh, not for, for profit concerns, such as uh, NIESV, that's not a profit making body, and uh, associations that are registered under Part C, the Kama Act. So these three distinct uh, group of organizations operate within an environment, but then the, the accounting needs vary in some way. And that, that's why it is important that the valuer should be able to know the kind of company is working for. You should be able to classify it properly, whether it is public or is it private or a non-profit uh, entity, because the standards also vary with these uh, entities. A financial report to the private sector operator is a set of documents that show how financial situation of a company at the end of a particular period of time, including how much profit or loss is made. So to the private organization, because private ent entities are, are profit driven. As long as they are profit driven, their balance sheets, everything must be able to uh, kind of uh, give a proper outlook of how, uh, what profit, how much profit they're making within a particular period. Then to the public sector, it is how public entities account for their stewardship. That is public money and other assets. Financial reporting helps in decision-making and increasing accountability, openness, and transparency. We, we, we know, we know like, like, like the Federal Ministry of Finance, there was a time they were talking about preparation of asset registers in this country. These are public sector accounting tools. Then we have the non-profit organizations, as I said, like our own institution. There's, their statement of financial position is also known as balance sheet. It's essentially a report that shows a snapshot of the organization's financial health. It measures non-profit assets, liabilities, and net assets in a single document. So not-for-profit organizations don't declare profits. What they do, they declare surpluses or shortages. So each of these three uh, uh, groups that are operating within an environment have different financial reporting requirements. What are the basic objectives of, of, of preparing financial reports? Generally, is to, pro to provide information about their financial position. That is, is called statement of financial position. Performance. It measures, it helps to measure performance. Statements of financial position, that is cash flows. So users of financial information include present and potential capital providers, employees, lenders, suppliers, customers, and the government, like, like tax authorities. So financial report is so important that this records must be kept because it is from the records that I kept that financial reports can be prepared.
Financial statements also show the results of management stewardship of resources entrusted to it. This information, along with other information in the notes to the financial statements, provide users of financial statements with information about their assets, their liabilities, their equity, income and expenses, including gains and losses, contributions by and distributions to owners in their capacity as owners, and the cash flow. So basically, these are accountant, uh, accounting tools. And for every financial statement prepared for an organization, there should be comprehensive report on this uh, items. And uh, you will believe me, you will believe with me that when it comes to assets and liabilities, the reliability of the valuers reports, I mean, the, the reliability of the financial statement is dependent on the reliability of the valuation reports on these assets, which we are going to see later. So the quality of financial reports, one, should be fairly presented. Should be relevant, that is materiality. And the underlying assumptions of their pre preparation based on the current accounting standards are that it has to be on accrual basis, not cash basis. Accrual basis, meaning that the financial statement should take account of every record of expenditure and procurement, purchase and sales should be recorded, not just the actual cash that got into the organization. Two, it should be a going concern. The financial statement should reflect, should be in an organization that is ongoing, not a liquidating entity because Financial report for a liquidating entity presents a different uh, character. Qualitative characteristics it must be understandable, it must be relevant, and it must be reliable. Then comparability. The report, <clears throat> the report must be able to compare past and present. That's why most financial reports, you will notice that uh, we're in 2023 now. So a 2022 report presented in 2023 should be able to tell the management that we have progressed between 2021 and 2022. We have progressed, we've met, uh, we've, we have, I mean, at least in percentages, what we have gained or what we have lost so that the management can take uh, uh, decisions or moving forward with uh, the companies. Then timeliness. The report must be provided at the time, at the expected time that it should be prepared. Then cost and benefit. The report must be beneficial to the organization. What are the content of financial statements? As I mentioned earlier, there are, we have assets, liabilities, equity, this and that. But then I am going to look at just the balance sheet at a glance. Because the balance sheet is the, 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 the component of uh, the financial report that speaks about the assets, liability, liabilities, and the equity of the organization. It can show the current value of the business for the period it covers. And by merely looking at the balance sheet, you can understand if you can meet your financial, uh, your future financial uh, obligations of the company. And that is why the following equations can be resolved at a glance in any balance sheet presented to you. One, the assets of the organization is the liabilities, plus the owner's capital, that is the injected capital, minus the drawings, all these with drawings, I mean, uh, draw, uh, that's minus drawings, plus revenues, minus expenses. 
The moment you solve this equation, you will know the value of the asset of a particular entity. That's a cumulative value based on the balance sheet. Then the owner's equity is the total assets minus liability. Then the net worth of every business is its asset minus liabilities. This is known. So that's why the balance sheet is very, very important. And any wrong information on the balance sheet, which that information, if it is based on a valuer's report, it is capable of presenting a false information about that particular company to the board of directors or to the shareholders. That's why it's very important that the valuer complies with the standards, not just in the valuation standards, but in the accounting standards, in the preparation of uh, his reports to be included in the balance sheet of, of an organization. So what are the accounting standards? What is an accounting standard? It is fine. That is Yahya I mean, uh, uh, Isodomi in 2001 defined it as information system through which financial and monetized information is generated for economic, social, and political decisions. Yahya in 2011, that's in, from University of Illori, also she defined it as statements of accounting standards that are developed to ensure a high degree of standardization in publishing financial statements. They provide necessary guide on how accounting information should be prepared and presented in order to enhance the value of its content and facilitate thorough understanding. An accounting standards is a set of practices and policies used to systemize bookkeeping and other accounting functions across firms over time. Accounting standards apply to full breadth of the entity, entity's financial picture, including assets, liabilities, revenues, expenses, and shareholders' equity. So in reporting for assets, there are standards. Reporting for liabilities, there are standards. How revenues should be reported are clearly stated, and shareholders' equity. That is why, the, uh, the, as, as we will see later, the various accounting uh, standard setting organizations have made this I mean, provision for each of these particular uh, items. So, the Nigerian government adopts the international financial reporting standards with effect from 1st January 2012 and is implemented through the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria that was created by an act of parliament in 2011. So the accounting standard setting in Nigeria is currently the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. But FRCM has adopted the international financial reporting standards. And this is clear, this should be clear. So what are valuation standards? Now we've spoken about account accounts. Now let's look at valuation standards. Valuation standards are the key guides for valuation professionals globally to underpin consistency, transparency, and confidence in valuations. International valuation standards are central to International Valuation Standard Council's mission to raise standard of international valuation practice as a core part of the financial system for the benefit of capital markets and the public interest. That's IVAC 2022. So you, you, you can see, you can see I, 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 those have uh, written through the screen, I said, I made, I, I made it bold that valuation standards are developed as core part of the financial system. So it is safe, it is safe to declare that valuation reports are financial documents. 
is safe. Because for every valuation that is carried out carrying financial statements, it means that that statement is capable of being carried into companies' accounts where decisions will be taken. And the moment that document is, take, is carried into the financial document of the uh, accounting documents of a company, it means that the VAT, that valuation report is now a financial document. And this is why we have to be very careful. And that's why IVAC in 2022 made it clear that valuation standards are developed as core part of the financial system. And the objective of the international valuation standards, the objective is to increase confidence and trust of users of valuation services by establishing transparent and consistent valuation policies. This is contained in our Nigerian valuation standards 2019. Even though uh, I'm told that Esbabon has approved uh, MBS uh, Nigerian valuation standards 2022, but but uh, I'm yet to lay my hands on it. But I want to believe uh, what we have in 2019 so far suffices before that one comes into uh, play. So in the valuation standards, that is the IVS standard. It's not all the all provisions in the standards that are mandatory. Some are mandatory. Some are advisory, and some are just to inform the valuer. So before, before the valuer applies any standard that uh, is contained in the uh, Nigerian valuation standards, that's let me use the green book. He has to go to the delivery framework of that standard. Because international valuation standards, IVS, a set of standards to be adopted. While we have the delivery frameworks for those standards being developed and applied by persons that are registered to implement those standards. And that's why Nigeria, that's Esbabon, adopted international valuation standards that's the IVS, and again adopted the Red Book issued. That's the global edition of the Red Book issued by the uh, RICS. So the RICS is the main delivery uh, framework for the standards being set by the IVS. Because RICS wouldn't have developed its own standards without recourse to the IVS documents. And thank God uh, that our own uh, regulatory uh, body in Nigeria adopted the two standards so far now called the Green Book. That's why for those that have the Green Book that are participating in this webinar, they may, they, some, some, some may complain, uh, why are we having IVS, we're having uh, uh, the Red Book, and we're having the Nigerian, uh, I mean, about the three other uh, Nigerian content inside the one book. We have to appreciate the board, that particular decision by bringing the three documents into one document for compliance in Nigeria. So when picking any set of standard to apply, particularly for financial reporting, you have to make sure that you know whether that particular standard is mandatory. There are mandatory matters. There are advisory matters. And there are issues that are just for your information. So that's why the international valuation standards as contained in the Green Book are comprised of five general standards and eight asset specific standards. The general standards are five, as I mentioned. IVS 101, which defines scope of work. That, that means what is that trying to tell you is that you, should, you must be able to know what you are doing. 
or in a particular evaluation. These are general standards. Issues of investigations and compliance, how to report. You can remember even Esbabon recently, uh, recently issued uh, valuation reporting templates. These are report, it's, it's in compliance with IVS 103. Then definitions of basis of values and approaches and methods of valuation in the general standards. Then the asset specific standards. Now going, I mean, narrowing it to what we are doing. That's the content of this, uh, the, the, this webinar. You, we have IVS 200. It covers issues of businesses and business interests. 210, intangible assets. And you will agree with me now, intangible assets. Now, there is a confusion whether as, uh, virtual assets are to be uh, accounted for as intangible assets or non-financial instruments. So we are waiting for directive from the regulatory bodies on this matter. And virtual assets we're talking about, these are Bitcoins, things like Bitcoins. These are assets that some companies now invest in Bitcoins. For instance, the situation of Nigeria now where the uncertainty is so high, some entities have moved their, some of their liquid capital into virtual capital, into Bitcoin. So assuming an account is going to be prepared and as a valuer, you are, you are, are you going to throw away the fact that that Bitcoin, I mean, that money invested in the in virtual currency should be, should, should be neglected? No. Therefore, it is likely that we are going to have uh, standards very soon relating to virtual assets. Then 2020, you have provisions on uh, non-financial instruments, you have on inventories, you have on plant and equipment, you have real property interest, development property and financial instruments. So if IVS has covered all these things, but there, is, there are valuation standards for all these things, it means that the accounting standards, the ac no accounts, no financial statements can stand its tests without compliance with the provisions of uh, the IVS with regards to these asset specific standards, because these are the assets that are basically reported in the balance sheets. So let's look at the international accounting standards and the IVS. That's why, are they, how are they connected? They are, they are very connected, as I earlier mentioned. The International Valuation Standards Council's mission is to raise standards of international valuation practice as a core part of financial system for the benefit of capital markets. I mentioned this thing earlier. In fact, Deloitte, an accounting firm, a famous globally renowned accounting firm, in this year, in 2022, just last year, emphasized that it was important for us to establish guidelines that are in compliance with the IVSC, as the IVSC is the most globally recognized source of valuation standards. It is a very important statement and it's weighty. It's not just weighty, it's weighty on the accountants and it's beneficial to the profession of valuation, which means the two bodies, IVSC and IAS, that's the International Accounting Standard Setting Organizations, must work together. So it is the same thing in Nigeria. For financial reports to, to be, to, uh, to, I mean, for financial reports to be globally acceptable, issues of valuation in those reports must be have been carried out, must have been carried out in line with the provisions of the Green Book. So assets reported in book of accounts that do not comply with the provisions of the uh, uh, provisions of the, the Green Book, I think uh, should be questioned. 
So we thank God, Esbabon encapsulated and adopted the IVS standards and the Red Book, that's a global edition. That is where the Red Book provided the uh, VPGAs, that's a valuation practice guidance applications as its delivery framework via the Nigerian Valuation Standards 2019, the Green Book. So let's look at the delivery, uh, the delivery framework. That's the RICS delivery framework. Yeah, uh, side by side, what I earlier mentioned. There are provisions for valuation for inclusion in financial statements. Valuation for inclusion in financial statements. So this, you have valuation for interest for secured lending. You have for business and business interest, trade and related properties, plant and equipment, intangible assets, personal property, including arts and antiques, property interests, and identification of portfolios, collection and group of properties, matters that may give rise to material valuation or certainty. So there are 10 delivery frameworks issued in the global edition of the uh, Red Book, which valuers must be abreast of. So, valuation standards for, uh, for inclusion in financial statements. That's a VPGA one. I just isolated this one because if we are going to discuss all, <laughs> the time will be I mean, The time will not permit. So I, but this is very important based on the topic of, of, of discussion today. We are looking at uh, valuation for financial statements. So I took only the VPGA one, which the delivery framework RICS said it is. And, and it's advisory, it's not mandatory. But within it, mandatory areas are emphasized. And why are they saying it's mandatory, it's, it's advisory? It's because the document is of global dimension. And being global, there are country specific requirements. So some countries have not adopted the IBSC or the RICS. Uh, global, global edition or whatever. But Nigeria has adopted it. Both the Valuation Regulatory Body and the Financial Reporting Council has adopt, have adopted this particular standard. So in Nigeria, the application of VPGA1 is mandatory. I want us to understand that it's mandatory. And VPGA1.2 states that valuation for inclusion in financial statements require particular care as they must comply strictly with the applicable financial reporting standards adopted by the entity. So, where the entity has adopted the international financial reporting standards, the basis of value will be fair value. And IFRS 13, dealing with fair value measurements will apply. That is VPGA 1.2. So in Nigeria, where we've adopted the IFRS through the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. So valuation for inclusion in financial statements will be based on fair value. And IF, IFRS 13, also defines fair value as the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at measurement date. This is the most critical item in measuring fair value for inclusion in financial statements. But if you look at this definition, it is not radically different from the definition of market value as a basis of value, which we, we all know as the estimated amount for which an asset or liability should exchange 
on the valuation date between willing buyer, willing seller at arm's length transaction after proper marketing and where the parties had each acted knowledgeably, prudently, and without compulsion. And this, the definition of fair value, however, varied with what we had in IVSC 2011, I remember, which speaks about the value between identified and knowledgeable parties to transaction. So currently, as of 2023 that we are today, the definition of fair value based on the IFRS statement is that price that will be received to sell an asset or pay to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants and at the measurement date. And this must be stated in the valuation report. It must be stated. Because this particular statement, this, this, the disclosure of this statement in the report is what the accountant will carry and report and put as part of the accounting notes and statements. But if you don't comply, it means that reports uh, some problem. So I will go back to Financial Reporting Council a little bit so that you will now see the next source again. As I mentioned, the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria was enacted, uh, came into life in 2011 through the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria Act. And Section 8 of the Act, that's the powers of the Council. A, to develop and publish accounting and financial reporting standards to be observed in the preparation of financial statements of public interest entities. B, to review, promote, and enforce compliance. Review, promote, and enforce compliance with the accounting and financial reporting standards adopted by the council. This is very important. C, specify in the accounting and financial reporting standards the minimum requirements for recognition, measurement, presentation, and disclosure in financial reports, which every public interest, uh, interest entity shall comply with in the pre uh, preparation of financial statements and reports. You will now see that we're talking about FRCN is to specify in the accounting and financial reporting standards the minimum requirement for re recognition and measurement. I remember we were talking about fair value measurements as the basis for valuation on for financial reports. So Financial Reporting Council is very, very important in this regard. So within the same law, the Financial Reporting Council in section 23 uh, has about uh, seven directorates. That's Directorate of Accounting Standards, private sector, accounting standards, public sector, Directorate of Auditing, Directorate of Octorial Services, Directorate of Inspections and Monitoring, Directorate of Valuation Standards, and Directorate of Corporate Governance. And in civil service, when an organization has directorate, it means that, that this particular directorate, each should have a director. So there should have been a director of valuation standards in Financial Reporting Council, which I don't know if there is any for now. But there should be a, a, a department of valuation standards to have a director of valuation standards. The civil servants amongst us should know this. Then, however, it is that department that would now uh, be kind of, uh, that, that would have developed the valuation uh, standards in line with the Green Book and issue same to all the accountants for compliance. So you can see the gap. Accountants can never, what we are, because they are training, they are, they are not trained in valuation, but most accounting, most assets up till today are reported on cash basis, not on accrual basis. And assets, I mean, sorry, yeah, assets are, 
uh, their book values, I mean, are, are, are reported in their accounts based on the book value. That's the historic cost. Up till now, most organizations, and they are doing that because there is no uh, issued by that directorate to all practicing accountants in Nigeria. So, uh, uh, for instance, if you will recall, in Nigeria in 2018, there was uh, the the directorate. There was this code of corporate governance in 2018 issued by the Directorate of Corporate Governance that led to so many organizations to change their this thing, where you know you, you cannot be chairman of a bank throughout your life, all these kind of things. So we are supposed to have the same uh, kind of directives from that Directorate of Financial Reporting Council issued to the accountants. I, I think because we should understand that there is a difference because in that law, it provides that the the, 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 the Nigerian institution of estate surveyors and valuers are in the council of the Financial Reporting Council. And I'm happy we have a member in that council. But having the member in the council is different thing. But having the directorate is another thing. That directorate, I think, is still empty. It's not today's job. So we should look at that. So the Directorate of Valuation Standards is supposed to develop an appropriate conceptual framework to guide the setting of relevant valuation standards, including the explicit objectives and characteristics of such standards. Create a process for the development and adoption of standards, which ensures that the objectives of the conceptual framework can be applied in practice. Develop relevant valuation standards or amend existing ones in response to evolving commercial practices, economic developments, and deficiencies identified in the current practice. Take account where appropriate of the regulatory requirements of the legislation and any other relevant regulatory body aligns with the valuation profession regarding areas of practice for which new standards may be required or existing standards should be modified or clarified. Consider the need for a generic standard for the communication of valuation advice. And, and liaise with the International Valuation Standard Board, this time council, and other international bodies on the development and application of international valuation standards. For emphasis, I, bold, I, I put that place in bold and G, perform other duties which, in the opinion of the board, are necessary for this and that. You can now see this directorate has a lot of functions to do to save uh, this country. So what are the requirements for compliance? It says that the council shall maintain a register of professionals. You will remember, you will note that estate surveyors and valuers are also required to register with the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria as professionals. Because a person shall not hold any appointment or offer any service for remuneration as a professional for public interest entities unless he is registered under the Act, where the council is satisfied that the applicant holds a practicing license certificate. The council shall enter the name of this and that in the register. It's just like as well. And a person who contravenes this section commit an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine not exceeding 500,000 or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding six months of vote. So if you are carrying out valuation for inclusion in financial statements and you are not registered by the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, it is a crime. It's a crime. So it's just, again, any public interest entity which fails to comply with the notice referred above commits an offense and shall on conviction be liable to a fine not exceeding 10 million naira and be required to restate the said financial statements. And what is it? It's where the council reaches a decision to the effect that a public interest entity has failed to comply with any of its own decisions under this act 
and with such other financial reporting, accounting, auditing, and financial reporting standards as may be specified under the relevant enactments, the council shall serve a notice on the entity for an immediate restatement of its financial statements. What this section is saying is that if companies fail to comply with say valuation requirements in their financial reporting, they have committed crime also, and they are liable to pay to pay about ten million naira. So you can see how 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 how, how these things are connected. So valuation standards and accounting standards are connected. So let's get back to our fair value principles for financial reporting. I have uh, mentioned the, the definition before. That's it's a prize that will be received. Uh, you sell an asset or liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at measurement date. Now, I, I, uh, International Financial Reporting Standards 13 is clear about this definition, which will be very important that we list in a bit so that we know that an asset or liability is to be measured at fair value, might either be a standalone asset, asset or a liability. It could be a financial instrument or a non-financial asset. B, that is group of assets. Assets could be grouped at the same place, in the same distance, or a group of liabilities. That is just like portfolio assets. E.g., cash generating units or a business. We're not talking about business valuation, the entire business, where the value of that business is the value of its asset minus its own liabilities. So, orderly transaction means that there is a principal market for the asset or liability to be traded. And in the absence of a principal market, in the most advantageous market for the asset or liability. So now issues of basis of value, I mean, premise of value come, comes into play where you have uh, highest and best use scenario or orderly liquidation or whatever. So there should be orderly transaction. Market participants in developing this assumption, an entity need not identify specific market participants. No. So rather, the entity shall identify the characteristics that distinguish the market participants generally, considering factors specific to the following, the assets, the principal, that's the principal market, and the market participants. So the price is the principal. The price in the principal market used to measure the fair value of the asset shall not be adjusted for transaction costs. Transaction costs here means additional costs, maybe uh, commissions, the uh, uh, cost of uh, registrations. These are transaction costs. So when you are measuring the, uh, uh, the, the price of an asset in the market, you have to discount all those costs because it's for inclusion. So, and this is where I think the definition differ with market value definition. Because this one, it is it, just talking about price in exchange. Only the price in exchange, discounting any transaction cost. Sorry, I will soon conclude. Then the valuation techniques in section 61 of IFRS 13 being referred to by our by the Green Book. It says that an entity shall use valuation techniques that are appropriate in the circumstance and for which sufficient data are available to measure fair value, maximizing the use of relevant observable inputs and minimizing the use of unobservable inputs. That means the value must be market reflective. Net of transaction cost. We should avoid assumptions if possible, which means the most appropriate method of valuation in this situation, the method is direct comparison. But we're coming there. So the objective of using valuation technique is to estimate the price at which an orderly transaction to sell an asset or to transfer the liability will take place between market participants 
not known or identified participants at a measurement date under the current market conditions. So three widely used valuation techniques are market approach, cost approach, and the income approach. Remember, this particular statement is coming from IFRS. It's not coming from IBS. So it is the financial reporting standards that regulates accounting that says that the value of this asset should be developed through these techniques, to be arrived at through these techniques, market, cost, and income, which are already contained in IBS 105. That's the, the standards, uh, IBS standards 105. So an entity shall use valuation techniques consistent with one or more of those approaches to measure fair value. In some cases, a single valuation technique will be appropriate when valuing an asset or a liability using quoted prices in an active market or identical assets or liabilities. In other cases, multiple valuation techniques will be appropriate. For example, example that might be the case when valuing cash generating units. If multiple valuation techniques are used to measure fair value, the results shall be evaluated considering the reasonableness of the range of values indicated by those results. A fair value measurement is the point within that range that is most representative of fair value in the circumstance. This is very critical. So basically, these are the valuation techniques and these are the provisions for valuation provided in our uh, standards for financial reporting. I will, uh, however, advise that uh, listeners, I mean, our, yeah, the participants need to go and download IFRS 13 and read more on fair value measurement, read more, read the Financial Reporting Council Act and the Nigerian Valuation Standards. What I have is 2019. I'm told that it's going to be 2022. I advise that we get abreast with these things. And I, before I conclude, I want to thank the first vice president. He has always been Mr. Standards. So I'm not surprised that he is sponsoring a program on standards application in valuation. And I thank him personally for uh, making me to and to know more. And I wish that uh, participants will also go and read more, know more. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Estee Sovio and uh, Adamu Kashimu. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. And um, we really appreciate you for your time. Now, we'll quickly go to the uh, question and answer session. But before we get there, I think amongst the several uh, things we have learned here today, there are three key things that I want to quickly call, draw our attention to, which the facilitator mentioned while, during his lecture. Number one is the development of standard of virtual assets. I think this goes to Estes of your and Value Association Board of Nigeria. And um, it will be taken care of. As an academy, we are going to look at the feasibility of it and see how we can push it forward. Then we also have one of the things also is the Nigerian Institution of Estates of Yours and Valuers or and or Estates of Yours and Valuers Association Board of Nigeria influencing the creation of Directorate of Valuation Standards in, in the uh, government parastatus. Then the third one is that advice to Estates of Yours and Valuers who carry out uh, valuation for financial reporting. The uh, facilitator advised that we should ensure that we register with uh, FRCN because not doing that, we 
amount to commit uh, that one is committing an offense. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Uh, please, let's have our questions. We can have, okay, let me look at the chat room. Good morning, sir. What are the, I, I want to quickly go to question and answer session because our facilitator will be leaving anytime soon. He has a meeting, if as a matter of fact, he should be in a meeting now. So let's see. Uh, let's say we are taking like three or four questions. Then after that, we can we can allow him go so we have more uh, comments. Okay, I have here. Okay, this is uh, Yusuf Miriam Ayutogo. Good morning, sir. What are the procedures for one to be registered with IFRS? Thank you. Okay, uh, we have Joshua Nwoba Nwoha. Thank you, sir, for the well-presented lecture. Please, will you be kind enough to share your presentation? Okay, uh, Mr. Joshua, I can assure you that uh, just look at look out for it in your email after the uh, after this webinar. Okay, uh, Mr. Daniel Kukola, what does it cost to register with? I think it's, this question goes with uh, the question asked by Mrs. Yusuf Miriam. Are you to are you to go? Okay, that's asking for the requirements. So um, I think cost is going to be part of it. If uh, then we have Mr. Bashir Oladuni, what are the parameters for determining yield in income method of valuation? Okay, what are the parameters for determining yield in income uh, method of valuation? Then we also have. Okay, I think. Um, uh, ESV Adamu, uh, ESV Adamu, can, can we, are you taking note of the question or I should just uh, take them I one after the other? I took note of them. Okay, uh, I think there are there are one or two basically more. Basically two questions. Yeah, basically. Yeah, two questions. He now said, okay, another person has, Mr. Ibenesa, you can have the presentation after the webinar. You just look out for it in your email. There, the DK Oliga, Oliga. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. Can we have the okay? Same. I think there are basically two questions. Okay, like I said earlier, the facilitator will be having another program after this. I think after answering the two questions, we can allow him go. Then we have more comments. Then I have people. Uh, some of the some of our senior members of the profession in the house, which I'm going to recognize after the question and answer. Thank you very much. So yes, uh, Adamu, please. Thank you very much, uh, our moderator. Well, the procedure for registration at uh, FRCN, is a, FRCN is a government office. I will advise that you go to the office and register. But I, for me, as a person, I have registered. You can register as, a, as an individual, and you, you can also register as a company. So uh, I'm aware of that. And uh, there are annual renewal payments that are done. But uh, it's better you register before you carry out any valuation for financial reporting so that you don't run foul of the law. Then the second question is parameter for determining yield. Well, uh, thank God I, I was a teacher. <laughs> the issue is that we have to, what is, well, we have, when we say income approach to valuation, we are making reference to investment, profit, residual, uh, throughput, DCF, that discounted cash flow. Every valuation model that depends on income uh, generating capacity of the uh, entity. So how do we arrive at our yield? And if, after all, what is a yield? Yield is a market rate of return. So a market rate of uh, return is based on evidence of existing market activity. So for you to derive your yield, you should be able to know and to know the market 
income, the capacity of that property, what that business or entity generates. And there should have been a comparative, uh, uh, comparative amount of sale for you to develop that coefficient. So uh, yield is basically a function of market uh, uh, elements. So that is, bet is between income and is a relation that's a relationship it is YP uh, equals to, is it CV equals to YP minus, uh, times uh, NI, net income, that's all. So your problem is the yield. So if you put it, put it, uh, just box it mathematically, you will know that you will need to know the uh, the cost of, I mean, the value of uh, an equivalent asset and its income. So you should be able, to, then you can develop your yield that you can apply for a, a, a related property or asset. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, our facilitator, Sorry. Uh, from what we have here, I think uh, is we is a good because of your time. I don't think we have any new question. Okay, um, thank you so much, sir, for your time, and uh, we would have loved you to continue with us so that we can bring in some of the senior members of the profession to also have their comment, but because of the I, other I engagement. I will be listening as I, I okay. drive to the, the uh, because sorry, I have a board meeting. Yes, I, I understand. You, you say thank you so much for for your time. Uh, we we'll allow you now, why we allow you to go for your other engagement, we want to appreciate you once again for your time. And uh, we pray that Everything that your hand finds doing, the God Almighty bless them. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, now let, let's uh, quickly go to uh, comments. Let's we want to have comments of some of our other senior members of the uh, professional who are present here. I saw today on the list of participants. Uh, Professor I.K. Ozigo. Professor I.K. Ozigo is a lecturer in the University of Nigeria, Unsuka. He's a senior member of the profession. He's also a lawyer. I don't know if he's still in. If he's in, uh, the uh, IT, please help us check if he's still in. Let's uh, bring him in as one of the panelists uh, for his uh, comments. I'm not too sure if he's still in. No, sir, it's not him, sir. Oh, it's not in. Okay, um, I have also, I, I'm just trying to, I'm struggling to check. Okay, no, uh, Professor IQ Zigo is still in. Please check, he's still in. Please check, Professor IQ Zigo is still in. I can see, I can see him. Abi, can you see him? Check, his name is part of the, is on the participant list. Yes, I -K. What's the name, sir? I, I, Y, K, E, Ozibo. I, Y, K, E, Ozibo. Okay, I'm checking, I'm trying to check for... Okay, sir, done, sir. Okay. Uh, good, mo good morning, sir. Let's see. Hello? Ah, I can... Okay. Oh. Can, maybe maybe it's network or something. I don't know. I am Hello, in. Prof. Good morning. Good morning, no, sir. In. Good morning. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> <Mo morning. Yeah. laughs> Yo, th thank you so much, Prof, for, your, you so for much. being thank part you. of this webinar. Thank uh, you so much. 
Right. Yes, as, a, as one of the senior members of the institution and the profession, we, we appreciate the fact that you are here with us this morning and uh, we want to have Thank your you. comments. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. You know, I I want to thank you. I don't know if the is our president on, in the webinar or the first vice. No, Are they it's not. It's not in yet. Uh, one, of the one of them is in yet. Uh, okay, okay. I just wanted to greet them in absentia. Yes, sir. You know, I I honestly I want to thank you so much for organizing this program. It is very very commendable because that is the end thing in um, modern professionalism, particularly in our profession, you know, these financial reporting standards. And I commend the resource person very immensely because he actually presented his uh, paper or did the discussion in the simplest form that anybody could follow and understand and detailed everything that should be detailed. I really commend him and uh, equally commend you, the organizers. And I ask you to keep up such uh, programs and webinars as we continue to run this our profession in the best of standards and practice. Thank you. Now, my brief comment with the presentation is that, like I've said, I commend it. And then the only thing I want to point out is that our members should do everything they can to key into this idea of financial reporting, following the details presented by the resource person. You may not get the entire thing at a go. You know, it should be a gradual process because these are new things that came out because of uh, the modernity of our practice and professionalism. So you need to take it gradually. Don't be bothered, don't be scared and say, ah, can I do this and that? It's a very simple thing. It's, very, it's, not, what, it's not as studious as evaluation we do and other things we do. This is just to beef up your output and what you present out there as a professional so that you key into what is happening at every other part of the world. I will, I will plead with uh, the moderator and the organizers to try and see if they can get the paper from our resource person so that we make it available to members to go through more closely and digest the content so that they will be more abreast with the issues that we are raised. Because these days, like the presenter said, if you don't encompass and factor in these things in your valuation these days, I mean, nobody will regard it as anything. It will be, you know, as good as, you know, it will have little or no value, particularly to the users out there. So we can never shy away from these standards and these the requirements to beef up and standardize our evaluation practice. I really commend you and I thank you. And I'm so much glad with what I got from the presenter. I thank you, I'm still online. God bless you. Uh, if you look at uh, Prof's background, it appears Prof is not in town, it's not in the country. You can see how much sacrifice people do for knowledge. Anyway, oh, one will be. Oh yeah. my God. Prof, you are not in the country. Yes, sir. I'm in, I'm in the United States, sir. Oh, thank you so uh, much for, okay. thank you for, so much for joining, for the sacrifice to join. Okay, okay. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not surprising okay. when, when we, we have always known you okay. as somebody who valued knowledge. Oh. I will always support anything that is going to bring knowledge oh. and uh, exposure to people. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that compliment. Okay. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You, sir. God yes, bless you. Sir. Amen. Yeah. Okay. I also have him here. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just don't know. Uh, there are some people. I, I just see some names, but I have. I think I saw Mr. Kevin. Yes, yeah, sorry. Estes of and Valua Kevin Ophili here today. Um, uh, add me, please let me check if uh, and if there's any other person, any other senior member of the profession that have uh, left out, uh, please uh, please remind me or just call my attention to it. Kevin so Ophelia, that, uh, please, sir. Oh, Kevin. it's as a part uh, as a panelist. Yes, sir. I've sent 
Okay. 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 All right. Uh, since you have sent, uh, you have sent uh, an invite to him. Let's see if we will get it. Okay. Now, um, while we are while we are waiting for SA Solvian Valua Kelly Ophili, uh, I'm still trying to scroll because I saw some names earlier, but I can't find them again. Maybe I pass them. Okay. But if if any of the panelists here, if you know anybody that's there, okay, yeah, SA Solvian Valua Kelly Ophili is still in. Please, if you can hear me, SA Solvian Valua Kelly Ophili, we have been a message has been sent to you to be to join the panelists. We want to have. A, uh, okay, as a matter of fact, Estes of Yan Valor Kevin Ophelia is, is a fellow of Nigerian Institution of Estes of Yos and Valors and uh, the chairman of plants and sorry, the chairman of plants and uh, machinery valuation professional group of Nigerian Institution of Estes of Yos and Valors. Okay, so and we keep monitoring. I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure if you can hear us. Okay. Um, while, we are, while we are waiting for that, I'll, I'll wait for more comments. I, I want to quickly say that, like, the, this program is the fifth series of the webinar on fundamental, uh, fundamental knowledge of property valuation for best practice. I, I want to share on the screen now some of the uh, webinars we've had in the past, some of the series we've had in the past. Okay, we, the series one was uh, the team. The team generally, like I said, is fundamental knowledge of property valuation for best practice. And our series one, the topic for the series one was understanding purpose and basis of valuation for practical application in the assessment of value. And the resource person that uh, did justice to the topic was uh, he has, it's a essay of Yam Valois, Salam Uyumi, fellow of the institution, and that it was aired on 15th March, 2022. Like we said, each of our webinar series attracts uh, Ezra Bond two credit, uh, two credit points from Estates of Yours and Valuers Registration Board of Nigeria. Then series two was on property valuation and scope of inspection. This was handled by Estates of Your and Valuer Ni Faduju is also a fellow of the institution. This was aired on 5th April 2022. The third series was on market comparison method <clears throat> and adjustment for comparability. Handled by Estes of Yale and Valor Kenichuku Onora, also a fellow of the institution. This was heard on 2nd June 2022. Series 4 was on market value and fair value, a comparative analysis for proper assessment of value. It was handled by our heritage professor of valuation from University of Lagos, Estes of Yale and Valor Professor. Gabriel Kayode Babawale. This was aired on 28 September 2022. And today, we defer the fifth series on understanding the provisions of applicable standards for financial reporting violation has been uh, thoroughly dealt with by uh, Esther Sovia Valua Adamu Danla Di Kashimu, also a fellow of the institution. Now, in this series, we have the, we have a sixth one. This series is just from series one to six. And uh, we have the sixth one, which will also be coming up uh, very soon. Now, the, I, want to, I want to let us know that to, to begin this uh, series, to begin this webinar series, we actually, in order to, you know, based on the nature of the person we have as the first vice president of the institution, S.A. Sovia Valor, Victor Adinkoli Alunge. Apart from this series that he co sponsored with Risa Academy, because our belief is that as an academy, we have a corporate responsibility to do for the institution, for our institution. And in doing this, we 
try as much as possible to get co-sponsors. And we did. We got Estes of your and Valois only along to join us in this. And to the glory of God, the program has been going on and we are going to have a six series very soon. Okay. By the time this series uh, uh, we conclude this uh, webinar series, we are going to come up with um, uh, other ones and other, another team and the series we are going to try as much as possible to write letters to sponsor because on this too, we wrote letters to several sponsors, but the only person that showed up is Estes Sobio and Wada, Victor Adekoli Alunge. By the time we want to start another webinar series, we are also going to you know, write letter. Please, when you see our letter, just know that this is the kind of thing we use this for. Knowledge is very key. And we believe that this is the only thing that can make our profession to continue to be, to, to try and to be prosperous for uh, all of us. Okay. Now, I want to, I don't know if uh, Estes Sovian Valakiri Ophelia is in, but before I even go there, now uh, let me use this medium to also let us know some of the things that we do at uh, Risk Academy. Like we all know, Risk Academy is a private training center accredited by Nigerian Institution of Estate Surveyors and Valuers and Estate Surveyors and Valuers Registration Board of Nigeria. As an academy, we run a series of programs. We have the uh, uh, preparatory classes for uh, candidates preparing for S uh, Nigerian Institution of Estate Surveyors and Valuers uh, professional exam, okay? And to the glory of God, we have always been having fantastic results. The last um, result that was just released in, uh, in uh, uh, the last one that was released November last year, I think it was released January, we had 100% passed. All our candidates passed both at, diff at all levels, foundation, PQ1, PQ2, uh, PQ3, and PP. Okay, apart from the, currently we have, the preparatory class going on for those who are going to sit for the May, June exam, preparatory, uh, professional exam. Okay, it's on, we started about two weeks ago and it's currently on. So I want to use this medium that if you know anyone that around you, not only if, whether well, the person study their state management, because part of the things that we do, that we currently do in Risk Academy is that, there are people who are already agents, who have been roadside agents. And I can tell you, they have gone through us, they have become registered estates of yours and whether we have them in their numbers, okay? So this is what part of, you know, is part of the ways by which you can support the efforts of the institution. You know, I, I remember that we have AEA here that was set up to bring agents together. And at our own level as an academy, we are, we are also using this to support the institution to bring agents, but let bring them in, let them have the right knowledge and let them come into the pool. Even if they want to continue to do their agency, but at least they know how to do the agency better. Apart from that, we have estates of theirs in our various offices who have not written exam. Please encourage them, let them write exam, let them also uh, qualify. Apart from the preparatory classes that we have, we also have some specialized trainings. And we have done, we have probably in our, in our calendar, we have uh, training on AG property portfolio management. We have training on uh, how to prepare, get a uh, process title documentation, you know, how you can practice on your own. If you want to add it to your practice, you get the training and find that you are doing it. It's not something, it's not about what you just read in a book or another theory. No, this is the know-how. You learn it, we tell you what to do, you know, and you, you begin, and also how you are going to begin to make money from it, okay? We also have training on the, the, making for the letter, please. Yes, sir. For the letter, please, before you go ahead. Yes, sir. I just observed that we have uh, ESV David Marcelli. Okay. He's a senior member, I think, and he's somebody I want our participants to listen to. Uh, we equally have uh, Professor Godfrey Udo, a professor of estate management who we so much respect. We would like our participants to hear from him, uh, particularly contributions. 
from this well, from these two uh, people that I call that I, I so much respect as scholars. So please, I will advise if, if you can give them. I've, I've, I've asked our IT to add them as a panelist. I don't know if they have accepted. So that let's hear from them first, then you can continue your discussion. Thank okay. you. Okay, all right. All right. Thank, thank you so much. Um, the admin, please, Professor Hudo, uh, Professor Hudo, and the essay Sovian Valor, David Maseli. Can you bring them into the panel room, please? Okay. Professor Udo is in. And uh, please, while try to uh, say, okay, Esther Sotian Valer, David Marcel is also in. Okay, good. Yes, let me start with uh, Professor Udo. Uh, apparently, Professor Udo may not know this. I'm uh, one of his, uh, I'm uh, one of his. Uh, mentee indirect mentee you may not know this but uh, i listen to him very much and <laughs> i so much appreciate his contribution <clears throat> to knowledge in the profession Every time i hear that professor udo is going to speak somewhere i'll be i'll try and make a point to be there he doesn't know me i don't think he would know me but i am uh, say so prof i'm telling you today that uh uh one i'm happy to to also see you here today and uh we appreciate all you have been doing. And uh, please keep it up, sir. Thank so you. So let's have your comments, sir. Thank you, sir. My comment on the on the lecture that was delivered, I guess. Uh, and contribution, lecture, sir, and, con uh, and, contribution. and contribution generally. <laughs> well, um, thanks. Thanks a lot. Good, um, good morning, everyone. I think I would have joined you slightly late. I think I saw slide four. I started from slide four or thereabouts, and I found the lecture very interesting. Um, I want to thank you for organizing this series of lectures that you have. I want to thank you for the wide publicity that you give it. I also want to thank you for the selection of topics. Um, so keep doing the good work. Quite a lot of people may not have a full um, a full knowledge or a full, how would I say it? They, they may not be able to put everything, everything together. So I'm gonna come from a particular angle right now. You will realize that the NUC is coming up with new curriculum, which they call core curriculum for the um, uh, minimum academic standard. They call it CC Mass. Now in this CC Mass, what they have done is that NUC, has developed 70% of the curriculum for Nigerian universities. And that includes courses like estate management. Having done that, they expect the universities to develop the other 30% of the curriculum, which means if the, if the faculties, if the departments in the various universities go in to see what we do at NISV, we have quite a number of faculties. Okay, plant and machinery, mineral, um, all kinds of valuation, all right? Intellectual property, et cetera. So if they get in there, they will find out that there are there is scope for including these things and making them specializations within various departments of estate management in this country. Now that takes me to the lecture of today. If you get into the lecture of today and a particular department wants to take just today's lecture, today's content, all right, which has to do with accounting standards and valuation standards. And one says, okay, we want to make this a part of what we plan to do. Do you know you can now structure your course in such a way that it lays emphasis on, on, on accounting in the first few years and then by the time you get to the final year, you go into the valuation standards and accounting standards. And your students who graduate from that particular university can say, we have key specializations in valuations that are, you know, in compliance with international valuation standards and international accounting standards, etc." So the lecture that Kasimu gave to us this morning was great. I sat here listening and saying, this is just what every academic needs to know, needs to hear today. This is what students who still don't know where the profession lies tomorrow needs to hear. Because you see tomorrow, 
Tomorrow, nobody's coming to ask you to go and value one, is one, one property that is hanging there. Of course, there'll be that. But a lot of the companies we know are all happening on, in, in virtual space. So you are going to have a lot of intangible things. You see, he mentioned he mentioned bitcoins, etc., as assets. We are going to be demanded to value companies that do those kinds of business. And when you get to what they are doing, you'll just see one computer and a server sitting in one room or another room, and the guys are there, you know, thumping away at their computers. And when they ask you to value that business, you might just say, "Is it just this computer?" No. So we have to begin to understand how to value those kinds of interests because that's what's going to be demanded of us before we know it. So that's just one thing I thought I, I should say about the lecture. And Kasimu did a very good uh, presentation of the lecture. Both of us were in the board when we took the 2019 um, Nigerian valuation standards uh, into the country and launched it. So yes, I'm glad that he's still doing it, but we are still behind him on that. So thanks a lot. I think I've said more than I am expected to say, but let me stop there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. We really appreciate you. I, well, I know you that if we, you have so many things in stock to really give to us. If we, if the time is there, and uh, maybe one of these days we we'll, uh, will invite you as uh, as one of our facilitators. If you no, would, no, no if, problem. <laughs> if, you, if, if we talk about that, that can be done. But I want to I want to apologize. I'm working at home, but the work I do here, I wake up very early and I stay on till very late. Hmm. If I leave here to get to my office, I won't do anything. So I'm sorry, this is my home environment and I am really, really churning out here. So I want to apologize for that. No, okay. thank, thank, no, no problem. thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you. For, your, for, your, for your interest. Now let's uh, have um, Estes of Yanvalua, David Marcelli. Uh, good morning, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Please, you permit me, I will not switch to video. I'm in an uncomfortable position and I just decided to join the webinar. Ordinarily, I wouldn't have been in the webinar. So if you permit me. Please go ahead, sir. Okay. I want to state, just comment on three things. One to the speaker and his presentation. I want to thank him very much, ESB Adamu Dalali Kasimu. I could say this is a, an abridged Bible of the evaluation for financial reporting. And I want to encourage every member to get a copy and we keep it very close to us and we refer to it if we are carrying out evaluation for financial reporting. Uh, my second comment is also on certain, to maybe address to the institution Thank God my president is around. He raised the issue of director of valuation standard within the FROC. Of the director. Like he was not very sure whether this right they said i don't think this is a director yet and we don't want a, 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 a system or a, a time where they're going to appoint a non estes of you as the director of valuation and my third comment is also on the technical presentation he raised the issue of the valuation for fi financial reporting on that fair value measurement I want to encourage our members that the measurement is emphatic on hierarchy of values because it mentioned observable and non-observable imputes. The observable are the ones you see clearly like the publication of shares. If I want to, if I want to value First Bank today, I might just multiply the current market share. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the market price, over all the total shares, that's like observable. But the next hierarchy which pertains to us is of the ones you can market evidence 
That's why the first priority for us is direct comparison method, which means this, the issue of data comes in. And that's why as an institution, as individuals, we must begin to also go back to our age long quest for data. Data is critical for us to be able to provide fair value measurement in a competent basis that will be relevant in the market space. Fair value, the, the market comparison method, and that only comes through direct comparison. Uh, that the, the, first, the, the, the highest hierarchy there for us is the direct market comparison of observable inputs. Some, uh, 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 what do you call that methods, investment, beautiful, the issue of yield is still subjective. Uh, it's lower than uh, direct market comparison. The, the last definitely is the cost method. You know, the issue of depreciation and the issue of the cost to be, cost per square meter to be used for, uh, might not have a market basis. Uh, it's like going to value a proper a, 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 a office in the in the village belonging to a corporation. If you try to adopt a cost method, you will not really get the fair value. So the critical matter I'm saying is that the issue of data on transactions is critical for us at this time. It will become relevant in the in, in valuation for financial reporting because the suggested hierarchy is on hierarchy one, observable, the most observable units which are public statements. The less hierarchy is, the, is, is data uh, comparison. You can, things you can give, inputs you can get, which is you can authenticate. Thank you very much. That's my contribution. Once again, I thank the institution to the real, the real institute for such a vibrant and robust webinar. I, I think I've missed some of them. I'll continue to participate. In the others. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, that was from our senior member of the professional estate of the um David Marcelli. Okay, thank you. Now you 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 find that so when you have uh when you have elders in the program, the discussion is always very, very interesting, and you have the different dimensions to uh to the to the talk so thank you very much uh all our senior members of profession of the profession who have uh, contributed to this before i i do further round of what we have in the academy i this is uh, the program is supposed to be two hours we just have 18 minutes more to go and uh, in, in another 18 minutes, we are going to close the program. Now, for the for all the all the programs we've done so far in this series, you know, we have we have a recorded video on our YouTube page. I think uh, uh, admin, well, what can we do if you can send the link across when you are sending mail or sending the um, this uh, the video for this lecture? Kindly let's see what we can do so that people can listen to them because the only sense is to get the knowledge, you know get to as many people as possible. So please, let's see what we can do about that. Then I was trying to say that apart from the uh, preparatory classes that we have in, in the academy, we have a calendar. I don't know if you can, can, can you see my screen? I'm trying to share the calendar, but I, I, I don't know if, uh, if it has been shared now, but I can, okay, let me just do a run that because of our time, uh, we have, uh, very soon we are going to be having a uh, training on discounted cash flow, okay, for uh, valuation. Now, discounted cash flow a program we coming up in a few days is going to take two weeks, sorry, a week or more, and uh, it's going to be a physical program because of the fact that one we need to you know, the need for the knowledge of uh, Excel spreadsheets and basic Excel knowledge, will first of all, be, you know, we be uh, uh, refreshed before we go in. So it's very important. And we have several other uh, 
programs or training programs that we do on property development, on project management, on real estate appraiser, and everything real estate we do in the academy. And just like what we normally tell our candidates who write a nice uh, professional exam, that it is that's because at that point, the, the, the demand on you the, is, is not very high. And you bring yourself to the public that, oh, I'm an estate surveyor and valuer. So it presupposes that, okay, you have knowledge of estate survey and valuation, okay? So that you can always meet the need of your client and the need of the public generally. One must continue to upgrade, update knowledge. And this is part of what we are doing today. So, but there are just some of the programs that are really, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, some of the training programs that we do apart from the preparatory classes. Okay, um, let me at this point uh, bring in our director of studies as a way of um, as a way of uh, getting close to the time that the webinar will end. Uh, I want to bring to the um, to the uh, I want to bring on board our Director of Studies, Estate Surveyor, and Valua Olali Kinabodiri, to have uh, to to appreciate the the professors and other senior members of the profession. I also have his contribution if he has one or two to add. Thank you so much, Estate Surveyor and Valua Olali Kinabodiri. Please. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, we come then Lawa. I want to sincerely appreciate uh, our resource person today. Um, well, he has not actually disappointed us. He had actually demonstrated what we know him for. And um, I, more importantly, I want to appreciate senior members of the profession here present and the professors and scholars that we so much respect that we look up to for making out time to be part of this um, webinar. Of course, that shows our passion for knowledge. That shows, you see, if a professor is joining webinar, that is to tell you that, uh, well, learning is a continuous process. And um, that is that's the quality of lead leadership because you don't believe that you cannot learn from anybody. Uh, we look forward to one of these days that where we will have the privilege of featuring our scholars and professors in sequences for the benefit of our members. On the paper that uh, was presented, uh, I want to say that is very well loaded. And as already promised, we'll make the slide available and even the recorded video will be made available for members. But let me call our attention to something there, particularly the aspect of Directorate of Valuation Standards in the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. This directorate <coughs> is required by the heart of that council. And I think to the best of my knowledge, we have nomination already. Uh, I think Naives, in the last, uh, was it AGM now? The last conference held in Port Harcourt, there was a nomination, somebody to, be, to represent us there as director in the directorates. So what I think we need to do probably, maybe um, that and this to the management of the academy uh, as part of the fallout from this training that may be need for us to uh, make submission to naive uh, management. Um, so that, because what you don't, a, 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 what you cannot aim at, a target that you can't aim at, you can't get it, you can't eat it. From this presentation today, we could see the role 
and relevances of these directorates. And looking from business angle, I could see that if this directorate functions very well and effectively, it's going to open a lot of business opportunities out there for our members. Because, of course, the facilitator, the resource person mentioned about uh, the code of corporate governance when it was out. And we saw how that rattled the, 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 the institutions, I mean, corporate entities all around in Nigeria. So if we have violation standard, this council is part of his role is to enforce compliance. After adopting international violation reporting standard, part of his role is to ensure compliance, to enforce compliance. So if the, director, the directorate functions well, and we have standard framework, we have the issue standard and so on and so forth, and it's functioning well to ensure that private entities in Nigeria will comply, we can think of a number of, I mean, the extent of job opportunities that members of our profession will enjoy. And of course, that will again, one time, bring us back to limelight and uh, position us within the uh, economic space of Nigeria. But if we have a directorate and we have a director and is not able to cross T and dot I to see even these issues, the way it has been presented today, and the, 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 the business angle of it, it is not for him to say, go and patronize Essence of Yamvala. It is for the directorate to do, play his role. When the directorate plays his role, the business will automatically come up for members. So it will be necessary for the academy, because incidentally, I've not seen the body, and I don't think I see any member, any, any of the uh, uh, management uh, committee of the Na of Naives or even council member. I, sorry if, if I can identify you, but as the academy, given that we are registered, we are accredited by Naives, given that s one have registered us again, uh, as well, we can make submission. And please, the management of academy should take note of that. As fallout of this training, we are making submission to Naives, particularly making emphasis on this aspect of the directory so that we don't sleep on our rights. It's not enough to occupy that, that seat. The, the relevance must be there. And if we play the role we're supposed to play in that council, definitely it will translate to a lot of, uh, uh, why it will translate to a lot of compliances among uh, business entities it will translate to a lot of business opportunities for uh, our members. Uh, this is what I think I should emphasize uh, out of uh, what was presented among so many other things that uh, have, have been mentioned. Now I want to seek your indulgence. I think the next webinar, the final one, will be coming up early March. If, if my memory serves me, it's going to be March 4. The next webinar will be coming up, and that will be the final on this series. I look forward to meeting many of us, and please get let's invite others, uh, because why we do this free for members is because we feel that it will be better for the profession and better for each and every one of us. But why it is free for members' participation? It is at a cost to the academy and to our co-sponsor. And we enjoy doing it, and we'll be happy doing it when we see that, I mean, the impacts are, we are seeing the impact in our various practices. So thank you, everyone, and I appreciate all members. Okay, before I go, uh, let me quickly uh, mention that uh, out of what uh, yes, we have said concerning the academy, on this, on the list today of participants, I think I've seen about uh, not less than five participants that are product of this academy in terms of uh, preparatory classes, and not just product that started with us from the scratch. 
Starting, starting with us from the scratch means they are non estates. They were non estates of value and value at the firm. They didn't study estate management. They came in. They came into the profession through professional progressions, writing professional exam from foundation. And today, they are not only uh, um, corporate members, associate members of naives. They have their seed and stamp. This is part of what the academy is doing. And uh, we can, I mean, the number is increasing. At least to the credits of the academy today, we have number, we, can, we, 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 are, we will be counting hundreds in terms of people that have passed through the academy, that have gone through our preparatory classes and have become elected, whether they have a, a, a real estate background or otherwise will be counting hundreds and the number keep on increasing. And just as we equally try to, you know, evolve new style and approaches to ensure that we achieve our goal and objectives for being a, a center for real estate professional development. Thank you everyone for your time. And yes, yeah. we come out again, please. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for your uh, comments. And um, we appreciate the fact that we have your, our director of studies and your generosity too, most uh, in, in in all the all activities. Okay, now I we are supposed to have the our co-sponsor, but I, I I think I got a message that uh, the is the current first vice president of the institution, so they are in a is engaged somewhere, and uh, he asked us to. Um, he sends his greetings that, uh, and with the assurance that as much as possible, so long as anything is going to bring, improve the knowledge of members of the profession, it will continue to make contribution to it, will continue to sponsor our programs, and uh, he sent his goodwill that we should continue to, not only to listen to the lecture, we should ensure that we follow through even where, even after the webinar, we'll try as much as possible to also listen to the videos again, go through the uh, the slides, and uh, endeavor to add more knowledge. To the essence is, according to him, is to better our practice and better the uh, profession. Okay, so th thank you very much. So on this notes, I want to, um, I want to bring to the to a close to this webinar and not without uh, thanking once again, all the participants, okay? When the director of study was talking, he said, yes, it's free to participants. It's a uh, cost to the academy and cost to the co-sponsor. Uh, I want to say it has, in one way or the other, it has some little cost to them because time is also of the, is, is, is a great thing. It's something that is not, uh, so, if you don't come, if you call you, and you don't come, and, and data. data. <laughs> so no matter how much we spend, yes, no matter how much we spend, no matter how, how much the co-sponsors cool spend, no matter what we put together, if you don't come, there's no way the webinar we hold. So we really appreciate you. We appreciate your time. And uh, I also want to say that just like what the co-sponsor, cool yes, we, Victor Alunga said, let's not just listen to the lectures. Let's ensure that in our practice, we try to you know, put these things into practice so that if we, we will be proud of our profession and the profession will be good for all of us. We'll also be uh, mentors for those who are coming behind us will be able to merge once again our profs, once again uh, senior members of the profession and all participants into this webinar. March 4 is another day, is the last series of this uh, current webinar. We hope we are going to get more than the number we got today. It's appreciable and we know we are going to get more. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. <laughs>